Hey, I'm Brian Trupek. I'm here to talk to you about the Atlanta ransomware attack of March 2017. In this attack, we had 13 government departments compromised. Uh, police, water, courts, records, revenue, maintenance, infrastructure, and the list goes on. How did this happen? It started with the user. This user was an employee of the Atlanta uh, local government. He ultimately was communicating with outside vendors, as they do. And in this communication, uh, he was sending emails. He got an email back, and that email contained an attachment. That attachment just turned out to be malicious in this case. That user expecting that attachment ran the attachment, and now the hackers had the authoritative execution environment of that employee into the Atlanta network infrastructure. The Atlanta network infrastructure had all of these departments connected. So now all these interconnected departments, the hacker has access, and now he is installing software very patiently, very meticulously inside of each department to monitor and manage these machines, gaining access to full control. He hasn't unleashed the attack yet. He's waiting to gain as much control of this network as possible. As he's going into these systems, there's usually a web component of the system. There's a middleware component of the system. There's a database component of the system. And as these components are in our talking, this malware is running password attacks against these components, each and every one of them. And it's automating these attacks and it's trying to get the passwords so it can just spread through this entire network and it does this very effectively. And so now that it owns this network, the Atlanta city officials, they get a request from the hackers for $50,000 in Bitcoin. And so they take too long to respond. And ultimately, the attackers go and request um, that all their systems are shut down. And now they lose access to all these systems. This hack ended up costing $2.6 million to the Atlanta uh, to back data up, to um, return systems to their operating condition, to make everything usable once again. Let's talk about how PKI applies to this problem. If we look at PKI, in this context, we could very easily have Atlanta have their own private key infrastructure. That means that they would create a private key. They would create a public key. That public key can then be used and communicated in the public, but it is a derivative of that private key, and it allows you to attest authoritatively that it came from them. They would enroll their users, this guy, and they would create private keys, usually automatic for them. Those private keys would come into their PKI architecture, their infrastructure, with a public key from that user, get signed by the Atlanta PKI, and returned as a public key, which is really a digital certificate, to the user, get installed for that user, and now that user is able to use that, um, in this sense, really, as a password. That password is cryptographically secure, revocable, that it cannot be breached. As we move that PKI into our problem space here, it's very interesting because in this email, we could have used a signed email to ensure that it came from the, uh, the person sending it. We could have used um, signing on that email uh, and encryption on that email to ensure the contents. Uh, and that would have secured the email coming in to ensure where it came from. The attachment, we could have used code signing on that uh, from a PKI derivative, signed that file to say it's executable only by certain contexts within the network that would have stopped that from running. But let's just say we got that far and this still executes. Now, the thing that made this so uh, this attack so effective is that each one of these systems were just hammered by password attacks by this malware. This web system, the middleware, the database, just hammered until they were able to gain control. If instead of using passwords, we used PKI for strong credentials in place of those passwords, now we would have strong credential access that could not have been attacked 
access to those systems couldn't have been gained. And now PKI would really become the key for this problem.